Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my controversial video I have been promising you guys all for so long now. As you can tell by the title, it's in regards to SeaWorld. So I feel like I've made it pretty clear not only through YouTube but through Instagram that I'm not only just sharing my reptiles with you guys, but I also want to share my zookeeper side with you guys and my passion for conservation and wildlife. So that's why I make videos like this. I've made my palm oil video. I've made my video about brands that give back to animals and back to conservation. Now we're going to start getting into the more controversial subjects such as SeaWorld. So obviously today we're going to be talking about my view and opinion on SeaWorld and on Blackfish. And I want to give you guys a challenge. So I want you to go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. And try not to unsubscribe or unlike this video by the end. That's going to be my challenge for you guys. We'll see how many of you stay with me after this. Alright, so let's just jump right into it. Oh wait, I'm not ready. Hold on. Okay, so let me start off with the obvious. I'm obviously a SeaWorld supporter. That is right, you heard me correctly, I am pro SeaWorld. You guys are probably like, oh my god, what the heck? Like, you went to school for animal behavior ecology and conservation. You love animals. Haven't you seen Blackfish? Have you even been to SeaWorld? Um, yes, I have been to SeaWorld. And uh, let me just tell you a couple of things. So today I'm here to explain to you why I support SeaWorld. Why does SeaWorld have my support? Also, number two, I cannot stand blackfish. That is one of the few things in this world that will actually get me severely heated. I, mm -hmm. we will talk today about why I hate blackfish. So just a quick rundown overview of this video. So we're talking about the beginning of time of SeaWorld. Some recent positive changes SeaWorld has made. And then we're gonna talk about Blackfish. And I'm just gonna, we're just gonna talk about it, okay? We're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna give you guys some questions to think about. You know, rhetorical, if you don't answer, you know, don't hate me, don't thumbs down this video, don't throw hate. It's just questions I want you to think about, okay? And then we're gonna talk about all of the amazing reasons I support SeaWorld. And then I'll leave you with a very important question to think about. Okay, so don't click off this video, don't get really mad and hate me and leave because at the very end of the video, it's something, it's a statement, it's a question, it's something that I live by. I constantly ask people this and I think it's very important. So make sure you watch to the end. If you do get really just so mad at me, you can't stand watching this anymore, skip to the end you can at least hear that part. Okay, so just some background. SeaWorld opened officially 1964. So way back then, obviously, zoos, aquariums, animal facilities were made for profit. People were going out, taking animals from the wild. They were creating menageries. They wanted to show off their animal collections. They wanted people to come and look and pay money. It was a way to make money, show off what you got. So obviously, this is what SeaWorld did too. Taking animals from the wild, showing them off, making some money, you know, making a profit. SeaWorld wasn't the only one doing that. All the zoos were. Over time, people have kind of gotten out of that mindset. They're realizing, oh, we shouldn't be taking animals from the wild. So a majority are not taking animals from the wild anymore. There is less for profit and showing off for animals, more for conserving the species and encouraging people and teaching people to help conserve these species why are they important and to allow people to make connections with them so that they will in turn care about these animals and show an interest and then i think it's also important to note before i get more into this video a lot of people seem to forget that SeaWorld is not just orcas orcas are not the only thing at sea world in fact they're just a small part of sea world so just keeping that in mind, SeaWorld is not just orcas. I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind here. All right, so you just said that zoos and aquariums have moved in good directions. So how has SeaWorld moved in a good direction? All right, so number one, everyone thinks that they're taking orcas out of the wild. Um, 
SeaWorld hasn't taken an orca out of the wild in over 35 years. So I don't know if that's gonna be mind blowing to you guys or not, if you knew that, but you know, fun fact, SeaWorld hasn't taken an orca out of the wild in over 35 years. Secondly, they've stopped their breeding programs, so no more breeding orcas in captivity, at least not in SeaWorld, and no more shows. Not any more of the big flashy shows. They're still gonna do, you know, orca training sessions and show to the public their natural behaviors, which is gonna be more educational, less flashy, shall we look at their tricks more, look at their natural behaviors, and let's talk about their conservation, let's talk about these species. So like I said, they won't be having flashy shows, but you're still gonna see orcas jumping out of the waters and getting cues from trainers. And that is because not only is it enriching, but they're encouraging your natural behaviors. You know, orcas naturally are jumping out of the water in the wild. Part of what zoos and aquariums are supposed to do is encourage natural behaviors. That's what they're doing. Okay, so we've got that background. We've talked about how they've improved. I wanna end this video on a good note. So we're gonna talk about blackfish now. We're gonna get very dark right now. And then we're gonna go really good. So blackfish is a one-sided movie. Notice how I said movie, not documentary. Cause it's not documentary, it is a movie. I've never watched it. I never will. About 99% of it is false information. And I'm not just saying that, there has been research, there is evidence, false information, we'll get into it. That movie came out in 2013. I hadn't even graduated high school. And somehow I, I questioned whether it was actually gonna be truthful or not. I refused to see it because quite frankly, I didn't care what they had to say. I was gonna make my own opinions I wanted to visit SeaWorld, see it for myself, do my own research, and not just let some film tell me what to think. So what really irks me about this movie, rather than being a movie about scientific research evidence with good information, it just plays off of people's emotions. Now I'm not saying it's all completely just lies and faults, it is lies and faults, for the time period that we're in and for when the movie came out. A lot of what they focused on were issues back when the parks first opened. Way back then, no zoos and aquariums were at the top of their game. None of them were great. A lot of them were still just trying to make money and show off animals. So yeah, SeaWorld's gonna look awful when you focus on the 1960s and 1970s. And that's what they did. It wasn't like, oh, Here's stuff from, you know, 2012, 2013, because, you know, we're making strides in the right direction. Let's go back three decades, four decades, and show all the dark times when we were really just trying to make money. Because then people aren't paying attention to the good things. They're only seeing what SeaWorld used to be like. Okay, so now before you guys get all defensive and tear me apart, we're talking about Blackfish without seeing it. Let me explain. I do have ways that I'm able to talk about this. So, being in college, I get the pleasure of meeting Heather Hill. Heather Hill is a comparative psychologist, a marine biologist, and a marine mammal specialist that has studied marine mammals in captivity for over 20 years, most of which she did in SeaWorld parks. Now Heather, she is pro SeaWorld. And she had very valid reasons. And she had a lot of interesting things to say, which is why I'm here now talking to you guys. So between listening to Heather speak, watching interviews, doing my own research, I do have some things I wanna say about Blackfish. There's a lot that I'm not gonna cover just because I feel like I don't have the right to talk about it without seeing the film. So like certain parts of the movie, I haven't seen the movie. I've seen clips, Heather showed us clips, but I haven't actually seen the full movie. So we're just gonna talk about a general overview, kind of. Which still is enough to make me hate the movie. So, I already told you, the movie plays off of your emotions instead of using science. How do they do this? Quite frankly, I am impressed. I double majored in digital media arts, so I have to give them credit for doing this. So, throughout the movie, think about the music that they're playing. 
today I'll show you just a plain old video of the orca swimming. But because they paired it with the music they paired it with, it made them look aggressive and made them look sad. No matter what the footage was, because of the music they paired with it, it made you switch to the emotion they wanted you to switch to. That is like a very good trick a lot of filmmakers use when they're trying to create an emotion and get you to think a certain way. They use the music to their advantage. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I can understand how someone that has seen Blackfish without ever going to SeaWorld or doing their own research would hate SeaWorld. So back to Heather Hill, obviously she's done so much research over the years. She loves marine mammals and she knows them pretty well. She's, she's very intelligent. I love listening to her speak. You can tell she knows what she's doing. So part of her research and things that she has done is take parts of blackfish and just debunk them. And she does this using science, using research. A lot of what they said, she looked to see if they used research, if they referred to research, if there was any research done about the claims that they have made. And for a lot of it, there was none. They were just making these claims without anything to back them. There was no proof, no evidence, no scientific research. So they're just making these claims for the hell of it and hoping people would believe them. So Heather Hill, she decided to study captive marine animals, especially orcas, because studying them in captivity allowed her to research their cognitive abilities and their behavioral and social development. And this allowed her to better understand their social needs, their social grouping, and according to her, one of the greatest changes in the last 20 years at SeaWorld is their ability to provide these orcas with the proper social structure. And in conjunction with this, so let's talk about how they are officially done breeding. Everyone had a problem with orcas in captivity, so finally they listened, they said we're not going to breed them anymore. And that sounds great, it does, that means eventually orcas are going to fade out of captivity. But here's the other thing. Heather, she's not a fan of the breeding stopping. And that's because there's gonna be no more babies. And what I mean by this is there's no more opportunities to research how the young interacts with the mothers, how the mothers interact with the young, how the young interact with the pod, how the pod interacts with the young, how the males interact with the young. You're losing out on so much research to better understand these creatures. And I know that doesn't sound like a very good reason to keep breeding. But another thing is you're taking out a key part of the social structure and a key part of their natural enrichment. These baby orcas are such a big part of their social structure. And it's a huge enrichment and part of a adult female's life. So now all these adult females, they're never gonna get the opportunity to be mothers. They're never gonna get the enrichment of having a baby, which is just natural. Also, these pods are never gonna have the enrichment of a young orca. They're not. I know that still doesn't sound like a great reason to keep breeding, and maybe it's not, but it is just another factor into all of this. So I also listened to a radio interview with Heather Hill. Um, I'm gonna put links to all of the articles, interviews, videos, lots of stuff that I think you guys should look into. I'm gonna link it all in the description. I've also made a blog post to go with this video because you know I have that blog I haven't touched in a couple months but I did. I made a blog post that has links to so many different articles, videos, interviews and I think I actually talked about more in that blog post than I'm gonna talk about in the video because I don't want this video to be incredibly long and bore all you guys but so I'll put the link for that in the description as well. You guys can go check that out. Check out all the links. I'll have a couple to places that actually go through the whole Blackfish movie, pull out all these sections, debunk them all with evidence. So anyway, I said I was listening to an interview with Heather Hill. She was questioned about their captive life. Isn't it boring? They're just stuck in these pools all day. 
Heather would be the one to know. She has studied them in captivity for over 20 years. And no, they're not bored. They have enrichment. That's a big part of zoos and aquariums is being able to enrich your animals, keep them busy, encourage natural behaviors, whether this is with toys, with foods, with training. A lot of people hate that these orcas are having training sessions and are flipping out of the water. It's enrichment. It's a natural behavior. And we're going to talk about this more in a minute. So because she is studying their behaviors, she has been able to see how this captive life affects their behaviors. And she said, actually, because they're not having to spend time hunting, they're not having to spend time worrying about surviving, they have so much time for other things, other play behaviors, other social and like individual personal behaviors. You get to see the personality of these orcas more. So she said, it's actually really interesting to watch them because they have so much more time to do other things. So I said training was a form of enrichment. So let's talk about training, because I know in Blackfish, they're telling you these orcas, food is being kept away from them. They're being forced to perform. Now, I'm gonna give you a situation. I want you to think about it. Say you're me. You're a five foot, five inch girl. You're standing on the platform, on the stage, at SeaWorld about to do an orca show. There is a giant 1,200 pound, sorry, 12,000 pound orca in the pool in front of you. Tell me how you are gonna force that whale to do a backflip. Okay, you're a 5'5 five five girl, 12,000 pound orca. You're telling me that I'm forcing that orca to do a backflip? That me, I could force that animal to do anything? Think about that. So now, evidence. SeaWorld only uses operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. This means that when the orcas do a behavior that they want them to do, they get rewarded for it. Now the rewards could be extra food, rubs, getting sprayed down with water. Every orca has their preference. So whatever that orca wants, they do the behavior that's wanted, they get rewarded. So what happens when they don't listen, when they don't do the behavior? Absolutely nothing. And that's what Blackfish doesn't want you to know. They want you to think that they're being punished for not performing. Nothing happens if they don't want to perform. If they don't want to do the tricks, the trainers just ignore it and move on. So all of these orca shows and how they're being forced to perform, no they're not. They have a choice. SeaWorld has canceled so many orca shows because the orcas didn't feel like doing anything that day. They didn't feel like flipping around in the water. They didn't feel like taking training cues. So they didn't perform. They canceled the show. They're not being forced to perform. They're not having food withheld. Good facilities aren't withholding what the animals need to be healthy and survive. They're not going to withhold food from them. Blackfish wants you to think SeaWorld's constantly separating mothers from their babies. They haven't done this in over three decades and they're not going to do it unless it's absolutely necessary, which means it has to absolutely be necessary since they haven't done it in over three decades. So another topic of conversation that came up with Heather Hill is what makes a good captive environment. And there's a couple of things from her research and from her years that she has found make a good captive environment. And that is that there are places provided for an animal to get away and to hide there is a proper social structure and they have the ability to come together and to get away as needed. All of this is provided by SeaWorld. You might not think so, but it is. They have all these different pools, all this different access. They have the social structure. Now let's talk about the pools. I asked you guys on Instagram to tell me what your concerns or complaints were with SeaWorld. Just about 99% of you said the pool size. The pool sizes were horrendous. The pool sizes were awful. Now, I'm not saying I disagree with you. You know, I think it would be great if we could offer an enclosure that was like ginormous, size of the ocean. Why not? Let's aim big. So I'm not saying their pool sizes are great. I'm not saying the environment is phenomenal. You know, 
I agree with you guys there, I do. If I were to ask you why the pool size upset you, why it was too small, why did it upset you? Odds are you're telling me a couple things. One, probably being the orcas are sad, the orcas aren't happy. Secondly, probably something along the lines of the orcas want to be in the ocean, the orcas want more space, this is what they want. So then I'm going to ask you, how do you know? And don't tell me because Blackfish told you. How do you know? Did the orcas tell you? Is there research? Hint, hint, there's not research. That's being extremely anthropomorphic, which means giving human characteristics to an animal, thinking that they think and feel the way humans do. We don't know this. We don't know how they feel. We don't know what they want. We don't know what they're thinking. So saying that they're sad and that this is what they want, no, that's what you want. That's what you think they should feel. We don't know that. Now think about this. These animals were born in captivity. SeaWorld is all that they know. Their trainers have cared for them their whole life. They don't even know the ocean exists. How can they long for something they don't even know exists? Those pools that they've been in, that's all they know. That is home to them. That is what they know. That is what's comfortable for them. Would they be happier in a bigger place? Probably. Who knows? Maybe. Could it also stress them? That's also a possibility. So a lot of people are also pushing for sea pens. Why don't we take them out of those pools, put them in a sea pen, you know, a blocked off area in the ocean so they can be in the ocean. They have tons more space. They're practically wild and free. See, here's the problem with that. That sounds great. You know, it does. When I first heard about it, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Here's the problem. These whales have been in these pools their whole life. It's what they know. Their trainers have taken care of them. They've had vet care. These pools are also tested constantly. They're treated to be kept at the perfect levels. So these whales have been kept in perfect waters their whole life. Putting them in the ocean, we don't know what's gonna happen. There's the pollution, we can't control what the water in the ocean is like. We could possibly be putting their health at risk. And that is something that SeaWorld has come out and said. They've said, we would love to do this, but that involves putting our animals at risk and their health at risk because we don't know what's gonna happen. So it just seems unfair to put a whale out there knowing that it might die, it might get sick, it might not make it. And all of the people at SeaWorld, all the trainers, they love those animals. You've ever talked to a trainer, if you've ever watched interviews, those people love their animals. They love SeaWorld. I can't see any of them being like, yeah, let's put this whale out there and hope it doesn't die. So I'm not saying it's completely out of question. I think people are still looking into it. They're still doing more research, seeing how we can maybe make it possible. But in perfect waters, you know, they're gonna be seeing fish and other things swimming around for the first time in their life. It might just be more stress and harm that it's worth at this point, especially if we're stopping breeding and soon we're gonna have no more orcas in captivity. I don't know, it's a very conflicting area and more research needs to be done before we can go further with that. So I said the whales also have access to more than one pool. Some of the pools are smaller than others. And I've heard from trainers, Heather Hill, many other sources, that when they have free choice and they can choose what pool to be in, some of them actually choose the smaller pools because those are their favorite pools. Those are the ones that, you know, have the fun stuff, have the fun enrichment, have, you know, they get rewarded in those pools, so that's where they want to be. But we don't know what the whales want. We don't know what they want to be in the ocean and that they're upset in their pools. When a lot of them are choosing to be in the smaller pools when they have access to the bigger pools. Those are all just things to think about. So think about this. This goes for all animals, not just orcas. But, you know, kids watching TV. He sees an orca on TV. Okay, cool, you know, it's an orca. Now imagine he goes to SeaWorld. And he's at the orca pool, right at the glass. And right on the other side of the glass is an orca. Imagine how life-changing that experience is for him. 
imagine how much more of a connection and an appreciation he has for those orcas than he would have gotten from TV or from a book. This is something I love about zoological facilities, is they allow people to come face to face with all these animals they would never see otherwise and to be able to make these connections because that's how we get more people to care about these animals and to want to make a difference. You guys might just tell me, well, tell them to go and see them in the wild then. Girl, you know how many people can't afford to go up to Alaska to go whale watching? And there's always a possibility that you won't actually see anything. So for a lot of people, this is the only way for them to experience these animals. Is this a good reason to keep orcas in captivity? Maybe not. But while we have them, you know, let's let people make these connections. Let's let them form these bonds so that they care. Oh, and another thing, they claim that captivity severely shortens their lifespan. They don't live nearly as long as wild orcas. Well, recently the Oxford University Journal of Mammalogy put out a peer reviewed study and they determined that captive orcas live just as long as wild orcas. Okay, my hat was driving me nuts. Anyway, I'm done with my points about blackfish, you know, the movie points. I'm going to end my blackfish rant with talking about cast members. You guys want to believe blackfish? You should know who you're listening to. The first cast member, John Hargrove, possibly the most well-known ex-SeaWorld employee because he speaks out about SeaWorld all the time. He was a SeaWorld trainer from 1991 to 2001 and again from 2008 to 2012. Did you guys know that he ended with SeaWorld on a bad note? Because of an incident with another trainer, he was demoted down to a sea lion and otter trainer. So he quit shortly after that. Also, he never even worked in Orlando. He never worked with Telecom, which is where the film takes place. Next up, Samantha Berg. She primarily worked with sea lions and dolphins, a little bit with killer whales, but never with Telecom. She was never on his team. She never worked with him. And get this, when the film was being made, she hadn't worked in SeaWorld in over 20 years. <laughs> she, 20 years, it's two decades. You know how much can change in two decades? Later she admitted that her knowledge of the protocols, the training protocols, the staff protocols, all of that only went up to 1993. The film was made in 2013. That's a huge gap and a lot that she doesn't know. But does she really have the right to talk about what SeaWorld's doing wrong when she hadn't been there in 20 years? Next up, Kim Ashdown worked with sea lions, dolphins, beluga whales, not even about killer whales. However, her too. She was never assigned to Tilcom's team. She never worked with him and she never performed water work with the orcas, which is, you know, getting in the water and doing that performing and training with them. Never did that. Next up, John Jett, similar to Samantha Berg, hadn't worked in SeaWorld in over 17 years. He only worked there from 1992 to 1996. However, he did work with the killer whales. However, he had very limited interaction with them. He was always under the supervision of spotters and a senior trainer. He was never in charge of Telecom's husbandry or training sessions. He was later demoted to sea lion and otter because he was not a strong swimmer. And rumor has it, the orcas didn't like him very much. So what are you gonna do if a giant 2000 pound animal doesn't like you? Next up, and possibly my favorite person on this cast list because it's just so ridiculous, Dean Gomersall. And I apologize, Dean, if I'm saying your last name wrong. Not really, but you know, I'll apologize. He worked with belugas, sea lions, otters, never with the killer whales. In fact, got fired for purposely kicking an otter during a training session. Lastly, Jeffrey Ventre. Venter, Ventre, again, sorry if I say your last name wrong, not really, but whatever. Again, another employee. Hadn't worked at SeaWorld in over 17 years. However, he did have three years as a orca trainer. But get this, he was also fired. He was fired for sticking his head inside of the mouth of what was labeled an aggressive orca. Pretty smart, right? So let's say I'm impartial to SeaWorld. I've never been there, I don't know anything about it. I've never seen blackfish. Let's just say that's the case. 
you hand me that cast list and I read through all of that, I'm automatically not going to believe anything that is said in Blackfish because none of those people sound like people I wouldn't want to listen to. They don't sound knowledgeable. They don't sound like people I can trust. They're all people that have an axe to grind with SeaWorld. They were either fired, they were demoted and quit, or they hadn't worked there since SeaWorld was probably a bad place, you know, two decades ago. All zoos are bad back then. So, you know, you have this lady, she wants to make a film about how bad SeaWorld is. She comes up and finds these ex-employees that have an axe to grind and offers them a lot of money and tells them they get to be in a movie. You would probably do it too if you were them. So just to conclude my Blackfish rant, there was one cast member I did not mention, and that is Mark Simmons. And that is because in another interview, he stated that he had at least three hours of interview footage with the Blackfish directors, people making the film, and they took out anything meaningful he had to say and made it sound awful. Typical, you know, journalism, newspaper, whatever it is, strategy, twisting what people say and like picking and choosing what you say to make it sound the way you want it to sound. You could tell he loved his job, he loved the animals. He said, if I thought these animals were being mistreated, if I thought SeaWorld was an awful place, why would I have stayed and worked here so long? So the link for that interview will be below. Also, you can watch it and decide for yourself. So to conclude my Blackfish rant, I beg of you, do your own research. Do not make your decisions on SeaWorld based off of Blackfish. That is not a valid reason to hate SeaWorld. It's not. I tell everyone, you know this, I always say, do your own research when you're getting an animal. You can watch all the care guides you want on YouTube. You can watch my care guides. I don't want you to take what I say and just basically go off of that. I want you to do more research. I want you to decide for yourself what is right and what is wrong. That's the same thing here with SeaWorld. So I told you guys I'd end the video talking about why I support SeaWorld and that's what we're gonna do. I said earlier, SeaWorld is more than orcas. So let's talk about more than orcas. Let's stop talking about orcas now. So I'm hoping most of you know about SeaWorld's rescue and rehabilitation program. I'm hoping, if you don't know, now you know. They have the largest rescue and rehabilitation program in the United States. And it is them and Bush Garden Parks. They work together and SeaWorld pays for all of it out of pocket. This could be, this is usually at least $1 million annually. In 2012, they paid 2.5 million for the year. What's even more amazing is they're under no obligation to rescue the animals and to rehabilitate them and to spend all this money. No obligation. In fact, the teams that go out are made up of animal care staff and rescue volunteers. So really the only thing that they are getting from rescue and rehabilitation is the joy of knowing the great work that they're doing. They're not making money from it. In fact, they're losing millions from it, but they get the pleasure of knowing that they are helping all of these wild animals. So why does it cost so much? Well, besides the equipment and you know, all the medical stuff, let's use the sea turtle as an example. Going out, rescuing one sea turtle alone can cost about $1,000. So where does the money come from to do all of this? SeaWorld's paying for it out of pocket, it's gotta come from somewhere. And it comes from the park, it comes from your ticket sales, it comes from you know, spending money in the parks, in the gift shops. So you guys are boycotting SeaWorld, refusing to give them money because you watched Blackfish. So now you're not helping them save all these animals. They are the number one program, biggest program in the US for rescue and rehabilitation of marine animals. And you're not helping them by boycotting. In fact, you're harming the wild animals. Imagine what they could do for these wild animals if people supported them and didn't just base their thoughts off of Blackfish. So not only do ticket sales fund their rescue and rehabilitation programs, it also helps with habitat protection and ocean health initiatives. So a little goes a long way. The money's also helping the science behind the program. They've been able to develop back braces for pilot whales and baby formula for manatees and prosthetic beaks for injured birds. They do a lot of amazing work. If you're anything like me, you wanna see numbers. They've had over 34,000 rescues. This includes 528 cetaceans, 7,972 pinnipeds, 
2,670 reptiles, 22,147 birds, and 273 other mammals. And to top it off, like most zoological facilities now, they have completely gotten rid of plastic stoves and plastic bags inside of the parks. So like I said, I've been to SeaWorld. And recently, I went in 2016, but I was a sophomore in college. I was currently, at that moment, in a social organization of mammals class. We had just finished our marine mammal section. I had literally taken my test on cetaceans and pinnipeds and all of that the day before we flew down to Orlando. So I could not have gone at a better time. I had also taken zoo exhibitry classes. So that's where we go to zoos and aquariums and we seriously judge them. Not only from an ABEC perspective, which my major we used to call it ABEC because it's shorter. Not only from an ABEC perspective, so we're looking at the enclosures, we're looking at the enrichment, we're looking at how the animals look, but also from a visitor perspective. So the facility overall. So I was in such a good place to go and judge SeaWorld. I went in ready to judge. I went looking for bad things. And you know what? I love SeaWorld. SeaWorld is my favorite park in Florida. Yeah, over Magic Kingdom, I am a Disney girl at heart. But I would go to SeaWorld over Magic Kingdom. I was impressed. I loved it. I had an amazing experience. So don't knock it till you try it. Do not judge SeaWorld until you go to SeaWorld and see for yourself and make your own opinions. Now this might not have changed your mind at all. You still might just say, screw you, Zoe, I hate SeaWorld. And that is fine. That is absolutely fine. I just wanted to come share my opinions, share my thoughts. I've had so many people talk to me about Blackfish. So it's just easier to make a video about why I hate blackfish than to just tell everybody again and again and again. So I told you guys I was going to leave you with a final thought, a final message that's very important. It's something I say all the time. Every time someone tells me they hate zoos, they hate aquariums, animals should be free, that they're going to boycott them all. So here's my question. Why are you spending all of this time hating all of these facilities, hating the zoos, hating the aquariums, hating the sea world? Why are you spending all this time hating them and boycotting them and fighting them when they're the reason we still have a lot of our species, when they're the ones protecting our species? Why are you not instead fighting the reasons we need these facilities in the first place? Fight poaching, fight global warming, fight deforestation. Then these animals can live in their natural habitats and we won't need zoos and aquariums and SeaWorld to go out and save them and to have them in captivity and to have breeding programs and SSP. We won't need any of that if these animals could survive in their natural habitats. Also, side note, when is the movie Black Shark coming out or are we just gonna ignore the fact that Georgia Aquarium has whale sharks? Also, side note, Georgia Aquarium is on my list of places I wanna go because I'm obsessed with whale sharks. All right, well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you don't hate me. I hope you're still subscribed and you still have liked this video and you haven't completely just like freaked out and left and hate me now. But you know, it is my opinion. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm not gonna hide my zookeeper side and my opinions from you guys. I'm gonna lay it all out there. Feel free to disagree. If you wanna message me and have a civil conversation, I'm all for it. But don't message me all angry and like, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. Civil conversations. I will have a civil conversation. So if you haven't already and you don't hate me yet, go ahead and like this video, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos and we'll see you next time.